Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so the score was 114-110. The Lakers lose in Houston, and the score did not tell the story. It was actually not as close as that was. We made a late, you know, surge down the stretch. The crazy inbound play that the Rockets allowed to happen where Austin Reeves miraculously caught the ball on the inbound with .3 seconds left and got a foul drawn, and they sat there for about five minutes. Most people thought the game was over, but it wasn't. And only for Austin Reeves to miss the free throw that ultimately would have gave us a one possession opportunity. And so that's how the game ended. That's just sums up the whole night, man. Um, the Lakers never had a chance. <laughs> never had a chance, man. Everything we were worried about, it came to pass. Um, it's hard to be mad. The madness comes when you start looking at the fact that you lost a game that you absolutely cannot lose on the schedule. So we'll get mad as we assess this and process this in real time. But as far as the game itself, watching the game, you can't be mad at anybody because you left yourself at a disadvantage as an organization when you don't feel in that center position going into this game. This is the game you can't do that against. You didn't respect um, that the Rockets were not just going to roll over and lose just because they're a tanking basketball team. Um you have to do things to help yourself. And we didn't do those things. You know, we got to the line a million times, 37 times. Um, got to give credit to guys, Austin Reeves, Dennis Schroeder. Uh, they got to the line repeatedly. So we love that we were trying to do big dribble penetration. We were very happy that the referees were, were honoring that by calling the calls. But we did ourselves no favors in any other area, shooting under 35, what was it, under 30. I think we shot 37 percent from the field i think that's how that went and like 26 or something like that from the three I mean, it's just not gonna win that way hoisting up 44 or something like that the, the stats are, are vague to me but we we hoisted a lot of three-point shots only made about 11 of them can't win that way uh 31 of 37 from the free throw line that's where we really made most of our money y'all the referees were very kind to us because we certainly weren't kind to ourselves um that's really what it was, man. Very disappointing stuff. Um, my level of disappointment is only growing as I continue to assess what it is that we just let happen. But, uh, you know, Darvin Ham, you know, this is one of those situations where you just say, man, you just wish your coach had a, a much greater imagination for what to do when you're lacking size. You know, Rui Hachimura got 17 minutes tonight. I mean... I'm not one who says I want to see Roy out there playing the four because I don't. But if you think for one second that I only wanted to see him 17 minutes when our t our situation was as it was going up against a bunch of athletes and big guys like Alperin Sengun and, and, and Jabari Smith and Deshaun Tate and uh, Terry Eason and, and Usman Garuba and all of those guys that they got. Um, you got to give credit to all of them because they had about seven guys in double figures. It's about everybody. KPJ was excellent, as expected. Alperin Sangoon bullied us heavily. I mean, it, it got to a point where it was like, we're really just going to allow Winyan Gabriel to just get mowed down by this dude repeatedly. He's just driving in the paint down a stretch of the basketball game. Boom, running straight into Winyan's chest, pushing him out the way like he's not even there. I'm like, dude, if you don't realize you need to put double teams on this guy, you need to have Vanderbilt and Winyan down there trying to stop this man from, from, from doing things to you. It was just like, you know, I look at Troy Brown, and I, f I remember games where he had 14 rebounds, 17 rebounds. He walked out there with two boards on a night like tonight. You know, I like what I saw in regards to the dribble penetration of a guy like Malik Beasley. He was trying to get us some buckets on the inside. He used his basketball IQ to know that the three ball wasn't the only thing he could do to contribute to his team. So I give him that. But the three wasn't falling tonight. We left him out there to get rebounded over. Same old small ball nonsense now involving him. And the coach ain't smart enough to get him off the floor when it's necessary. So we just left him out there on both sides of the floor to get cooked and to break shots and not rebound. And and this is my thing. It's like, yo, this is what I was saying in the halftime video. Our front office, Knights of the Round Table, have to keep a close eye on this team. Because there are things that happen in the NBA that are not as predictable as to just say, we're playing the Rockets, so we're obviously going to win. That is not at all what happened there. What you didn't pay attention to, it seems to me, 
is that this team decided to turn the table on their circumstances once a certain point in their schedule took place. As soon as they saw the San Antonio Spurs with two back-to-back games on their schedule, that was the turning point for them. They said, okay, from that point on, we're going to try to win every game we're in. Everybody's going to be getting healthy. We've already lost all the games we need to lose. That's our trigger point to get going. See if we can start the process of winning games. And they've been doing so. They've been playing like they want to compete as if this season is starting for them and they want to be on the best team in the league. So it's like when you go up against a team like that, you look at their roster. You realize that most of the players that they have in their front court are lottery players. Sangoon, Smith, Garuba. These dudes are high lottery talent that didn't flop. They just got drafted and they're and it's going well. So you know damn well you can't go out there without Anthony Davis, without a center, without Bamba, without Braun. You don't you cannot do that against that personnel. Then you look at their supporting cast and you realize that our role players normally like a guy like Austin Reeves is going to have a fantastic night against most role players because he's going to be able to beat them to 50-50 balls. He's going to be as quick quick to the, you know, stuff like that. He's going to get to the line. When you got athletes down there like Green and Christopher and, and, and Eason and, and, and Tate, they're not, he's not going to get past those dudes. That's going to be his problem in this league. It's just he's not going to be able to get past these dudes. He's smart enough to be able to, to get his. But as it pertains to him being able to flex in ways that he's normally able to flex in when he's slotted properly, it ain't happening. You need Anthony Davis out there to mask all of what goes on with you being at a disadvantage in this way. Now, if he would have been on the floor going 40 for going for 40 and getting 17 boards in three blocks, you beat this team. You don't have these problems. But because you decided as an organization not to play this man, you left yourself without what you needed to compete against a team that you probably don't really match up well against even if you're fully healthy if they decide they want to play for real. And that's the problem. I have concerns about this roster going up against us regardless just because of how talented and how long their players are and how powerful that Sangoon character is and we don't have anybody for him at all. Even when we're fully healthy, ain't nobody going to stop him from doing what he did tonight. And see, that's the problem. It's like we need Anthony Davis 100% healthy. Then everybody else can flex within their role because they're in position to do what it is that they do properly without having so much leaning on them. Our role players are just fine in their roles. But once you remove those superstars from the floor and you send them up against a full team, Nah, they're not. They're role players, man. And what you saw was a was higher level talent flexing on role players tonight against the Lakers. Your record and all of that, and what you were trying to do, it was an illusion. And because at the end of the day, you just didn't have better players on the floor than them. That's just what it was. And so as it played itself out, you start realizing it don't matter how much time is left, because the, the reality is they got better players. So with Let's say we were down eight with seven minutes to go. I heard Stu say, you know, it's a lot of time left. I'm like, yeah, but we're on their table and they're eating. That's what's happening. So if it's seven minutes left, 20 minutes left, 40 minutes left, it doesn't matter because unless we get some different people walking through that door, they're going to be the ones flexing on us through whatever time is left. And that's what it was. It was like, we're not better than them tonight, man. That's, that's just what it was. So you can you can look at the numbers if you like. I think we had like five players in double figures. I thought Winyan Gabriel played hard on the glass. I think he got his career high in 15 rebounds there. So we definitely like that. Vanderbilt had 11 rebounds, even though we started cold, very cold in the first half. We got to a point where I wanted him to stop shooting. But in the second half, he got a little closer. Um, did some good things, even though he missed some chippies down the stretch that I thought would have helped us. Um, he wasn't the only one, you know. Austin Reeves is as is, is impactful as he was doing the various things that he did. He didn't have a great shooting night shooting the rock. The three ball didn't fall. Um, Troy Brown had it going, but he didn't shoot as much. We needed him to shoot more tonight. Who knows when to ask him to shoot more? It doesn't necessarily become a situation where you just know which way to go. Um, I thought Max Christie would have been a fantastic player to have on the floor tonight. The, the way that he continues to try to rebound the ball every time we give him minutes. Uh, the way that he tends to use his length to help with, with blocking shots and things of that nature. 
um, his athleticism, getting to the line, his speed, and his ability to go left to right. I just thought he was the perfect person to put on my um, Josh Christopher tonight. Josh Christopher only missed one shot. You know what I mean? And we didn't even put Max Christie, one of our most athletic young talents, on the floor. That's what you needed, Darvin. You needed young athletes to go up against young athletes. And while, like I said, I got respect for our guys, you tro- you went on, we, you went with Malik Beasley. He was the absolute opposite of what you needed. Malik Beasley is not big enough nor athletic enough to keep up with no Jalen Green, Deshaun Tate. Uh, my God, Ken, uh, Kevin Martin Jr. What's his name? Kenyon Martin Jr. You know what I mean? No way. No way. The Martin Kitt was dunking all over us all night, man. It was absolutely embarrassing, man. And Jabari Smith had a cold game to start, but in the fourth quarter, he was the one who strung together the three-point shots that kept us out of it. You know what I mean? It's just like he was stepping right into his three-point shot. And my thing is, I'd love to be mad at Darvin. And to a point, I'm just like rolling my eyes at the decisions that he makes when we don't have enough. It's like, yeah, I can I can point at him all night tonight because that's just what it was. But it's about the choices we left him with. You know what I mean? It's it's bigger than that. It's on it's on our GM who's worked so hard to make this trade and get these trades in here to get all these pieces in here. But then it's like everybody just relaxed after they did that and said, okay, now they got it. It's like if you know what you're doing, then you know that's not what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Essentially is what I'm saying. If you know what you're doing, then you know that ain't what you're supposed to be doing. You still have work to do because you got to make sure that the roster is intact for each and every night. Every night. And tonight, we left ourselves absolutely no chance at competing against the Houston Rockets team. And the refs tried to help us. I'm going to tell you right now, the refs helped us. The NBA was trying their very best to make up for the stupid crap the Lakers did by going into this game with a schematic disadvantage against a team that desperately wants to tank. You know, just like stupid, man. It ain't it ain't deep and it's just stupid. Nobody's happy with this. Even the Houston Rockets ain't happy with this. They want to lose. And your dumb behind didn't put yourself in a position to have a center down there so you can compete with Aunt Sangoon, one of the best young players in all of basketball. Are you stupid? Are you dumb? That's what people need to be saying to the Lakers right now. Because that's exactly what it is. You do all of this to put yourself in a position to succeed. And then when it matters the absolute most, you drop a game that you cannot afford to lose. Why can you not afford to lose this game especially so? Because there are other games coming up down the pipeline that you may not be able to pencil in as a victory. This one was not supposed to be that. Now, because you've lost this game, you must win one of those games in order to make the playoffs. And that's the position we did not want to find ourselves in, where it's not within our control to do the best we can and still succeed. When you lose games down this stretch right here, any game you lose, that's what you're putting yourself up against. But especially when you lose one of these Rockets games. So for me, it's like, look, the Lakers may have just missed the playoffs tonight because the reality is we're going to be fighting for our playoff lives all the way to the end of the season because of a stupid decision to not leave ourselves enough size tonight. However that looked, whether it be to have played AD tonight and abandon that back-to-back rule or to make sure that you had someone on this roster that could have filled in to make sure that everybody was slotted, slotted in positionally correct tonight we did not do that rob palinka and this loss is yours so that's what it is it ain't deeper than that this loss belongs to rob palinka and the knights of the round table everything else that happened after that is because of what they created tonight taking the rockets for granted not doing their homework on this organization who doesn't want to tank anymore and assuming they were going to get the victory just because of it deserve to lose And this is what champions are not. This is the same stuff I was talking about early in the season when I was bashing them to kingdom come about the decisions that I saw them making. Because this is the type of neglect assumptions that you can just win and dominate without actually doing the work. This is the exact kind of stuff that's going to keep them from getting number 18. This right here. Not being thorough and being satisfied when you haven't done the work. You want to send these players out there to get their butts kicked in. You know, I watched Alperin Sengun lean on D'Angelo Russell 
trying to get a rebound. I don't know how that's not over the back, but luckily enough, D'Angelo was able to slip up out of there without hurting his back. This man's 250, 260 pounds leaning on D'Lo's back. That shouldn't even been like that. D'Lo shouldn't even have to box that dude out, is my point. He shouldn't even have to box that man out. Why the hell is he boxing him out? It's an organizational decision to not only leave yourself without size, but to allow the coach to continue to lean on guys like Malik Beasley so that we're in that position in the first place. If Malik Beasley is Rui Hachimura or Malik Beasley is Max Christie, more rebounding like players, you're not going to have that problem. Disrespecting size, disrespecting the field as a whole. Oh, it's the Rockets. We can just win. Have you looked at their roster lately? Do you know how they got the players that are on it? How bad they've been for the last seven years trying to accumulate all them rookies? How many trades they made to get people's picks who've mortgaged their future like us so that they can have all that talent over there? Those are not guys that they picked up in the second round, people. The Houston Rockets are full of first round picks and lottery talent. That's all they got. The whole damn team, just like OKC. And so for my Lakers to come in here, call themselves a championship caliber team with a crappy record because of poor decision making, not necessarily because of the roster leading up to this. Poor decision making is why our roster was, our record was as bad as it was. For us to go into this game as cocky as we were is to think we were going to win without even having enough size to do so just speaks to the loser mentality that still permeates within this organization right now. Even after making such fantastic roster moves, it's still a mentality there that ain't quite about that winning like I know we should be about as a 17-time NBA championship franchise. That lacks a thorough, detail-oriented focus within its mindset, and it shows. It absolutely shows. And as I've been saying all season long, you would have been food for the teams I rooted for. A Shaq-led basketball team would have never let themselves walk out there like this. A Pau Gasol team, they would, we made trades to assure this didn't happen. Why do you think Pau even got on his damn team? It was because of the necessity of this very thing. It's why we got him here. So that we didn't have ourselves without a sinner calling ourselves a contender. It's why Pau got here. You put Powell's jersey up in the rafters two weeks ago and ain't smart enough to realize that the very reason he's here is the same reason why you need to be going and getting somebody to help you win a championship. I'm telling you, it ain't deep as getting some great center. You can get a Moses Brown and would have made a difference tonight because all you need is somebody tall enough to make it so that everybody else can just slot into their proper positioning against better players. It's that simple. I can live with the fact we had to sit AD, even though I don't necessarily agree with it. I'm thinking way past that because we had made mistakes that put us in this position and we could either make another mistake in playing him tonight because of those mistakes or we can do what we need to do to be smart and just let it be. Smart is the only way to go. The mistake we made was playing him yesterday in the second half when we were up by 40. We shouldn't have played him then with the intentions of playing the day, as I've said at least six times today. We didn't do that, and you see how it played out. We lost to the Houston Rockets. <laughs> we lost to the Houston Rockets on a night where the Timberwolves is playing. That's a big game that they could probably win. Bunch of other teams that we need to see lose are playing against teams that we hate very much. The Celtics are playing one of them big games. The Clippers are playing one of those big games. And we need those two teams to win. And we didn't even win on that day. On that day. When that was going on, we didn't even have the DC to take care of our own business against a tanking team that doesn't even want to win. I do believe this loss is worth about two or three losses in the grand scheme of what it is that we're doing. About two or three losses. And I don't doubt that Anthony Davis would most definitely have been the difference 
I don't doubt that. With him being fully healthy, with no pain, and eager to get on the floor. Laker organization. You stepped in the way of all of us getting a win with this decision. Now, I, like I said, smarts over feelings. But the fact that y'all had made a mistake last night that inevitably backed us into a mistake this morning still doesn't seem like the best way for that to have had to play out. It should not. There should have been a center on a plane to Houston having signed a 10-day contract with the Lakers. That is the only thing that would have been acceptable to this. I'm sorry, nothing else. That's all that really is acceptable. It's the only thing that's acceptable here. I want to give kudos to my players. Everybody who put on purple and gold tonight, they tried their best, man. They did. They fought hard. They understood the assignment. They played to the best of their ability. They fought. They took some shots they didn't need to take, but, I mean, it's not like they weren't forced outside. I mean, the interior defense of that team, the transition defense of the Rockets, all of it was good, very good, and it stopped us. We were hustling, and it just simply stopped us. Um, and it was because we were too short all night long. So, you know, I, I, I really felt like there were some things we could have tried. Like I said, the Max Christie factor, Devon Reed, those are big defensive-minded guys. I don't know Devon Reed if he can play or not because we haven't seen him play long enough to know if he can really play or not. That's the part that bothers me It's like, Am I to just assume he's a scrub because these guys are assessing his game? When they sit in Lonnie Walker and, 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 and Winyan Gabriel all season? I don't trust my coach to tell me if a guy is any good or not. No disrespect to him, but I'm just telling you what I see there. I don't know if Devon can play or not. I want to see him play, so I'll know. And so that's that's a problem for me. That's a real problem for me. Because I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I remember having a conversation about the small forward position. I didn't involve him in that conversation in regards to who we had. I forgot to mention him and Max Christie as small forward options, for which I'm aware of and believe. But I don't know what Devon Reed can do. For all I know, we should probably be starting. We don't know. Because our coach won't play him. So this is crap. You know, I look at Max Christie and I feel like Max Christie has athleticism, rebounding prowess, shooting ability, free throw ability. Get to, you know, he's he's getting stronger, so I'm pretty sure he can get to the rim now a little better than he was at the first half of the season. I just see an athlete, a real athlete with defensive ability, as I've already mentioned, can move side to side with great size and length, smart, thinks rebound. And I just see him in the warm-ups all night long. And I know, not only based on what I've seen him do, but based on having this conversation with you all about other players who ended up proving me right, I know he could have did something to help us. I know it. 100%. He would have helped tonight. He is the prototype player you need to have go against those guys. It's what you want. No minutes. Zero minutes. And that's that's why it's like I can always point my attention at Darwin and say there are things that Darwin can do better. You know, within the circumstance. There's always, always things that he's doing that I just feel aren't good enough. And I don't I don't love wording it that way. Yeah, you know I mean, I'd like to find a better way to to display the truth about my feelings, but I just at the end of the day, understand this is a rookie coach and his instincts I don't align with in a lot of stuff that he believes about small ball and certain players he wants to play. I think the opposite, man. And so that's what it really comes down to. I really think the opposite. I think the evidence showed us that a lot of times he's wrong. And so when my opinion aligns with anything, it's going to reflect in that truth. Um, and however colorful it comes out, this is what it is, man. I don't agree with this stuff. It doesn't work. And I want to see changes. <laughs> As a Laker fan, I want change. If he can make those changes, cool. If he can't make those changes, we have to change him out of here. We have to remove him and get somebody in who can, just like any other time when we're tired with a coach uh, making bad decisions, man. Because, you know, I just, 
I understand the urgency of winning this this particular game. Um, he's saved by the bell, by the fact that we need to do what we need to do as an organization to get ourselves a center. But even if we had a center out there, even if we signed one, based on some of the rotation choices he's made, I'm not sure he would have played him anyway. I'm not sure Darvin Ham would have played the player we signed to a 10-day. Even if we needed to. If he didn't trust him, probably won't play him. And so, there always needs to be some attention paid to that through that right there. And just, you have to wonder, you know? You have to wonder if it would even matter. But, um... Yeah, man, Lakers, I'm just... I'm, 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 I'm at a point where the words aren't really coming as quickly right now. Uh, you just do not need to be losing any basketball games anymore. We're well past the point where we're telling everybody, okay, well, every game's a playoff game. We must win. We were doing that two weeks ago, man. We really were. And I look at the players' eyes. They know. I look at Austin Reeves and how hard he was fighting down the stretch of this basketball game all the way to the final second, millisecond. He gave me what I wanted. You know, when I scream into this camera about competitive nature, playing to the last whistle, he, he's it's almost like he's hes the reflection of what it is I'm talking about. He gets it. But uh, I think our organization as a whole, the front office, nah, man. I don't think they really get I don't think they really know what it takes to win, man. I don't think they really know. And that sounds crazy from people who have already run, but it's like, nah, the things that they're doing right now, it's almost like they've never been here before, man. You know, it's almost like they've never been here before. Because you do not ever let yourself walk into a situation like this. Ill, unprepared? When you gotta win? Your best player is hurt? And you're gonna sit your second best player when he ain't? And you gotta win. And you don't have a center to back him up. And you knew this when you tipped off. And you let the game play 48 minutes and nothing. And just let the outcome be as it was when that outcome was unacceptable to begin with. The type of thing I just don't understand. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. And even in the point, like, in the morning when I was thinking about this game, I'm like, all right. So, like, there's one trump card to all of this. I would never really say it on camera. But now that it didn't play out that way, I'm going to say it right now. The only way I would have walked into this situation if I'm Genie Bus without a center tonight is if I knew the game was rigged for me to win. Because it's like the schematic disadvantage is not going to matter because they're going to rig it so that we get. So it's like we can do that because st- we're going to win. But now that this game played out the way it did, yeah, we got to the lines 37 times, but they weren't effective in helping us win. We didn't win. Failed. Like that absolutely could not happen and now has transpired. And unfortunately, Laker fans, we're going to get what comes with that. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know we're making the playoffs, y'all. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know that this is going to end with us making the playoffs. I got my doubts. Because as is, it's not like we're waiting for Bamba to come back to save our season. He's not going to be back until the playoffs. So that means that center we're lacking, that's an everyday thing, whether AD's here or not. He's going to have to make that center difference up himself by himself every night and we're laying, leaning on him to stay healthy until Bron gets back when is he coming back and we're going to ask him to play center fresh off injury does that make sense like we're all the urgency to add a seven footer to this team uh, I think the urgency was this morning I think, I think it was before this game that's basically what it is. That was that was before this. Now it's too late, basically, is what I'm telling you. It's basically too late. Yeah, you can add him. But that should have been done already, man. So now we're now we're at the we gotta go on to play Dallas. You know what I mean? We still have to win every game. <laughs> we didn't drop two winnable games since since that's been the case. Um But we still must win, so let's just Put our thinking caps on. Hopefully Dallas will continue to sit people. They've been sitting a lot of people. Um, you know, Kyrie, Luca's out, etc. So I don't know if they will be willing to uh, do like everybody else does and try to come back against us. But it stands the reason why it'd be something we should be considering. Luckily enough, the next five games are in our house. So we don't have to do this road thing for a little while. So that's 
positive for sure. I don't know that the matchups really look all that great. We got to look and see what we play. But uh, Dallas is first up, man. So we split the road trip. Of course, we were happy with the big blowout yesterday, but then turned around and dropped a, a very, very, very necessary game against a team that only has about 17 wins. Mm. I'm not even... I'm I'm not at all pained by just this game. I'm more so feeling the weight of the entire season and just understanding what threshold we just crossed after losing this basketball game. After all that we watched, all the games that we dropped, where we should have won, I think about the Pacer game that I keep on reflecting on where we had a 17-point lead and it proceeded to not do anything <laughs> and hope the clock would save us, and it didn't. I think about all the games that we lost in stupid ways where we just didn't close properly or just miss free throws or whatever it was. Stupid crap. It was a lot of it. And then I look at this game right here. And I just say, now, when we go forward, any game we lose, it's probably going to be, it's going to be closer to the end of our season, man. That's what it really comes down to. Because of all them bad games and because of this game, now any game we lose after this could potentially be it. That could be it. That's essentially the thought. Because of all of those inept losses, you put yourself in a position to where you could not afford to lose this game. Lost this game, and now you really can't afford to lose one of those Suns games, the Clipper game. Uh, you got an OKC game coming up. I'm sure Shea will be healthy for. Uh, you got two Utah games coming up. You have to win those games in order to make the playoffs. If you would have won some of those games and this game, that would not have been the case. That's all it is. That's what it is. It's organization. Lakers organization doing stuff that's just not going to get them to a championship, man. It's going to leave them being food for other teams. And that's what we were tonight. We were on a platter for Sangoon, Smith, Tate, Green, Porter, all of them. All, all of their team. Christopher, they all ate good tonight. <laughs> Paul Silas, it's always good to see him doing well. I know what type of year he's had. But, I mean, at our expense? Nah. Can't say I feel too happy about that. So, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know, man. I legitimately think the Lakers might have missed the playoffs tonight. I think that. When you consider the, the fragile nature of our health, you can't, you can't be losing those damn Rockets. BDL 44, I thank you all for watching. I'm out.